SABC, together with the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development, bring you the final verdict. In the pursuit of justice, we are all equal before the law. These are some of the stories that have led to the final verdict. South Africa has one of the most advanced constitutions in the world. The Bill of Rights is a cornerstone of our democracy and affirms the democratic values of human dignity, equality and freedom. Because the Bill of Rights protects such a wide variety of rights, it sometimes happens that one right comes into direct conflict with another. It's then up to the courts to decide how to weigh up these potentially explosive situations. The right to equality is the, the cornerstone of, of, of our constitution. Um, all of us shall recognize that um, persons in this country have been based on staggered um, recognitions, other people being recognized as more important than others, in particular based on race and gender. So whatever um, social compact, in this instance, the constitution taking the country forward, will have to have its core value being equality so that we can begin to undo the damage that has happened um, in our political space over many years. We have to remember that South Africa is a melting pot of diversity. We are called the rainbow nation. Um, we've got all sorts and all different types. So it's important that we realize that tolerance is the way to go in order to respect these rights that are enshrined in the Constitution. <laughs> nearly there, nearly there. Mozart wasn't played in the day, you know? Hold up, who said anything about Mozart? It would be great if I could just get through one single hymn. Well, if you practiced once in a while... Well, who said I didn't practice? Okay. Mm. <laughs> Fine, you got me. Okay. Let's start again there. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, Christine. Could I have a word with Edward in private? Yeah, of course, Reverend. There's an agenda I've drafted for the Bible study meeting. Could you type it out for me, please, and make ten copies of it? I've left it on your desk. No problem. Thank you. So how can I help you? Well, Edward, there's no polite way of asking this, but it has come to the church's attention that you've been living with another man. Is this true? Uh, yes. Yes, it's true. But I, I hardly see how it could be any of your or the church's business. Are you homosexual, Edward? Excuse me? It's a simple question. I, uh, I don't see how my sexual orientation has anything to do with the church. You work for the church, Mr. Faree. You set an example to our younger church members. What does that mean? You know very well the church's position on homosexuality. You working for us makes us look like hypocrites. Well, what are you trying to say? Are you trying to end my contract? Well, if you're in a relationship with another man, then yes, I have to. Unless, unless you're willing to get some help. There are programs that cater for... I don't believe this. I don't believe it. You know, I've been working here for years now, and no one has ever had a problem with me. Well, that's because we weren't aware. Aware of what? That I'm gay? Well, I really don't think it's any of your bloody business. Please, Edward. And I also think it's very ironic that you're now firing me because you don't want to look like a hypocrite. Because that is exactly what you look like. You will note that the moral values of our society are based on mainly um, Judeo-Christian, Muslim, or traditional values, which in many instances do not recognize gays and lesbians. LGBTI stands for 
acronyms L stands for lesbian, which are women that are attracted to other women. Gay stands for men who are attracted to other men. Bisexual means you are attracted to the same sex, but you are also capable of being attracted to the opposite sex as well. Transgender, that describes when a person does not relate to the, to the sex that they have been born with. Intersex, which is the I, stands for those people who are born with dubious sexual organs. You cannot relate to it as a disease or an illness because it is something that cannot be infected. It's something that we don't regard that status like that. They are not mentally handicapped in any way. One of the biggest misconceptions is the fact that LGBTI people are not religious, which is not true. Um, it is important that you realize that we are trying to make inroads with the faith-based community currently. And recently, the Department of Justice was successfully able to meet with members of the Council of Churches um, in order to say, this is what it is, this is the status. We cannot keep killing or murdering or raping this particular group of people. So what are you saying to your congregations or to your people that you talk to? Edward's boyfriend suggested that they visit their local equality court clerk to lodge a complaint of unfair discrimination against the church. Can I help you? Hi, uh, I'd like to file a complaint, please, or a, an inquiry or something like that. I think the equality court can help me. Okay, sir, can you tell me what happened? Okay, basically, um, he was fired from his job because he's gay. John, please let me do this. Okay, so Eddie, basically what he just said. Well, it sounds like it may be a violation of Section 9, the Equality Clause, as enshrined in the Constitution and protected by the Equality Act. First things first, um, you need to complete these forms in detail, please. If there's anything you don't understand, I'll be more than happy to assist you. Thank you. One thing you should be aware of is that legal proceedings are not always necessary in the Equality Court, so you won't need a lawyer just yet. But if it does go to court and you need a lawyer, there are legal services offered to you free of charge. Okay. So after I've filled all this out, then what happens? Well, it depends on what kind of relief you are seeking mm. and whether the matter falls within the jurisdiction of the court. Mm. And if it does? And then it will go directly to the Equality Court. Mm. We'll get in touch with the respondent, who will be given 14 days to reply. Mm. After the allotted time, the presiding officer will call a preliminary inquiry, which is basically an informal discussion. And then, if necessary, we'll set a trial date. And that's when I'll need a lawyer? Yes. Uh, we can arrange with the SAHRC to organise you a lawyer to help you throughout the proceedings. But it's free, right? Yes. Once your complaint is assessed, mm -hmm. you'll be notified of the date of the directions hearing, and then we'll organize your legal assistance with the SAHRC. Great. The Equality Court clerk is the first point of contact with the public and assists applicants throughout the process. The applicant must make a complaint in writing for the clerk to open a file, which is sent to the respondent within three days. The respondent has seven days to respond in writing. Thereafter, the clerk must, within 10 days, forward the application to the presiding officer of the Equality Court, who makes a decision on the matter within a week. The presiding officer may decide that there is no case, or it is an Equality Court matter and it will go on trial, or the matter should be referred to an alternative forum. The clerk will then inform all parties of the decision. To lodge a complaint at the Equality Court, you don't need any documentation. You must, however, provide the details of the respondent in order to allow the clerk to send them notice of the proceedings. Coming up, Edward shares the effect that the unfair discrimination has had on his life. I've had to sell my house because I can't afford the bond anymore. And I'm living off the proceeds of the sale. The Promotion of Equality and Prevention of Unfair Discrimination Act was brought about to promote equality and eliminate unfair discrimination. 
The Act provides that neither the state nor any person may unfairly discriminate against anyone on any of the prohibited grounds, which include sexual orientation. In order to determine whether discrimination is fair or unfair, the Act sets out a list of factors for the Equality Court to consider in a given case, including the impact or likely impact of the discrimination on the complainant and whether the discrimination is likely to impair human dignity. Our Constitution, read with the Equality Act, commonly known as PEPUDA, lists a number of grounds which are deemed to be prohibited. Some of those are the following. We have got race, gender, sex, pregnancy, maternal status, ethnic or social origin, color, sexual orientation, age, disability, religion, conscience, belief, culture, language. First and foremost, our constitution provides equality and, and that equality is attributed to all of us simply because we are human beings. The Constitution recognizes that in many instances the rights may actually compete or, um, or conflict, but in making the assessment, the Constitution makes a provision that the assessment must be made on the basis of whether a particular right um, um, a discrimination based on, on, on certain instances may be justifiable in a free and open democracy. Reverend, do you have a moment? Yes, yes. The meeting only starts in 10 minutes and um, I have a feeling Mr. Smith is going to be late again. Um, this fax just came through. I thought you'd want to see it before the meeting. Thank you, Christine. Have you read this? Just the first bit. Mr. Swart is a lawyer, isn't he? Neil Swart, yes, I think so. Could you get hold of him, please? I think we're going to need his help in how to respond to this. And now it seems we, we may be going to the Equality Court. Legal representation in the Equality Court is not a prerequisite. This means, therefore, that even though you are not legally assisted by a lawyer, you can still bring a matter to the Equality Court. However, it does happen from time to time, wherein you find that the respondent, who in most cases has the necessary financial muscle, will enlist the services of a top legal guru in the country to defend for them. Then under those circumstances, the clerk of the Equality Court will in the interest of justice, advise the applicant to say, I think now you need to have a legal representative. The church chose to appoint a lawyer, so the Equality Court, with the assistance of the South African Human Rights Commission, made sure that Edward was provided with free legal representation. Two months ago, Mr. Faree was dismissed from his job as the church's contract piano teacher, purely on the grounds of his sexual orientation a direct violation of his constitutional right to equality. This has not only had a devastating effect on Mr. Faree's financial situation, but on his human dignity as well. This is a prima facie case of unfair discrimination, your ladyship, as prohibited by the Constitution and the Equality Act, and is the reason why this case has come before this honorable court in the first place. The onus is now on the respondent to show that the discrimination was fair in the circumstances. Mr. Faree may have a right to equality, my lady, but what about the Church's right to religious freedom? According to the Church's fundamental beliefs, marriage can only exist between a man and a woman, and homosexuals therefore should remain celibate. It is the Church's constitutional right to hold such beliefs and to express them. Now, the applicant was a spiritual leader and a, a role model for the students. And he was therefore required to follow an exemplary Christian lifestyle. 
The church could not be seen to be condoning the sin of homosexuality by engaging someone who was living in a homosexual relationship. Therefore, my lady, the respondent submits that discrimination was fair under the circumstances. We have to distinguish between fair discrimination as well as unfair discrimination. What the law prohibits is unfair discrimination. This therefore means that fair discrimination is allowed. I will give an example. Somebody who is HIV positive applies for a boxing license and the licensing board refuses to issue that boxer with a license to box because of his or her HIV status. You will realize that a boxing is indeed a contact sport and therefore blood can be shed. Therefore, that discrimination will be deemed to be fair. Mr. Faree, how often do you attend sermons at the church? I don't. I go to another church uh, in Belleville. Why don't you attend sermons at the church you worked at? The church I go to is more receptive and open to people with my sexual orientation. What were your responsibilities as a piano teacher at the Respondents Art School? I would teach my students uh, popular hymns, and if they showed more promise, then uh, we would move on to uh, well, classical music. And what about spiritual leadership? Nothing of the sort ever fell under my duties as a music teacher. I would never, I would never take on that responsibility anyway. How old were your students, Mr. Furry? Um, they were, well, they were all out of school. Uh, some of them were even parents. I would say that uh, most of them were of an age where they could form their own opinions on things. And where do you work now? I don't actually have a job at the moment. Um, this, this whole thing has now been in the papers, so nobody really wants to employ me. I've had to sell my house because I can't afford the bond anymore. And I'm living off the proceeds of the sale. The whole basis of the claim against Edward by the church is based on the fact that the issue of, of gays and lesbians are inconsistent with the church doctrines. It's important, therefore, for the church that whoever is a leader, and particular spiritual leader of that church, um, preaches or teaches the correct doctrine of the church. And in this instance, it was quite clear that Edward was not in such a position. Um, it, he was not expected to be teaching any doctrine of, of, of the church. Well, it's certainly not advisable and often not appropriate to be asking um, an employee in, 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 a, in a workplace whether they are gays or lesbians and so forth. It, it, that particular person, that person has a right to disclose or not. Coming up, the church leader argues their case on the grounds of freedom of religion. The church offers a program uh, aimed at reforming homosexuals, but he wasn't interested. Reverend, uh, how long did the applicant work for the church? About three and a half years. And how did you approach the issue of his homosexuality? Well, I approached it as sensitively as anyone can approach such a matter. I also offered to help him with his problem. Help? The church offers a program uh, aimed at reforming homosexuals, but he wasn't interested. No further questions, my lady. Reverend, did any of Mr. Faree's students ever mention his sexuality to you? No. So there weren't any inappropriate incidents with any of the music students regarding Mr. Faree? Not that I'm aware of, no. And have any of his past students ever switched their sexual orientation to homosexuality? No. <clears throat> then what kind of damages would you say the church has endured because of Mr. Faree working there as an independent contractor? Well, he was a representative of the church and his sexual orientation is a direct contradiction of our basic belief system. Yes, but what damages has the church suffered? Well, our reputation has suffered. A few of the members even threatened to leave because of it. And did they end up leaving? Well, when they found out he wasn't working with us anymore, they stayed. Are you aware of the damage that the applicant has had to endure because of this? 
Yes, I am. Who do you think got it worse off, Reverend? Your church or Mr. Faree? Well, obviously Mr. Faree, but the church retains the right to employ whoever it wants. Yes, you entered a contract with Mr. Faree nearly four years ago, only to end it when you became aware of one aspect of his personal life. Not because Mr. Faree failed to do a job that was expected of him. Is that correct? Yes, I suppose that is. <coughs> Recently, in South Africa, we have witnessed a number of incidents of homosexual intolerances, wherein people like gays, lesbians, homosexuals, transgender and intersex people have been subjected to unfair discrimination and also harassment. After giving this case the careful consideration it deserves, I find that the impact on religious freedom of not exempting the church from our anti-discrimination legislation is minimal. On the other hand, being discriminated against on the grounds of his sexuality has had an enormous impact on the applicant's right to equality and human dignity, two of the most foundational rights upon which our constitution is based. I am not convinced on the evidence presented by the church that the applicant was in such a position of spiritual leadership that the respondent's right to freedom of religion could justify such a gross violation of the applicant's right to equality. This court, therefore, finds the respondent church guilty of unfairly discriminating against the applicant on the basis of sexual orientation, thereby contravening Section 9 of the Constitution read together with the Equality Act. The respondent is hereby ordered to pay the applicant the amount of 76,000 rand for the impairment of his dignity and emotional and psychological suffering, as well as 11,970 rand for loss of earnings. The respondent is also ordered to make an unconditional apology to the applicant. In a case like this or similar case, the Equality Court can actually order an unconditional apology or it's even free to order that the person or the institution must pay damages either to the person that has been discriminated against or any other institution in the country that is concerned with the issues of, of, of the elimination of discrimination of any, of any nature. There are many such organizations in the country that the court can actually order that payments be made to them so that they can continue to pursue the job of ensuring that there's no unfair discrimination based on any of the irrelevant grounds that we're talking about, including sexual orientation. Proceedings in the Equality Court are free of charge. The Minister of Justice and Constitutional Development has designated all magisterial districts throughout the country as Equality Courts. For purposes of the Equality Act, all High Courts are also Equality Courts. If you feel like you have been unfairly treated or discriminated against on the basis of any of the prohibited grounds, contact the Equality Court clerk in your nearest Magistrate's Court. The final verdict was brought to you by SABC together with the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development.